Well, here we are. We knew at you know, we knew at one point that we would find ourselves in a precarious position, you know, with five teams and four spots, you know, for the college football playoff this year. You know, and you know, these five teams coming into this weekend had either no losses or just one loss. One of those teams wasn't playing, the other four were. And the desired outcome for one of those teams has been achieved. As we start, you know, on Friday night, not only did UTSA beat up on North Texas, the desired outcome for the Ohio State Buckeyes came to fruition as the Utah Utes, led by Cam Rising, and a great, just a really fantabulous effort, you know, as, you know, Utah was able to take the game away from USC. They literally took the game away from USC. I mean, Trojans were starting to get banged up. Caleb Williams is getting, her, you know, banged up. And, you know, everybody was just, you know, that, that defense can't tackle to save their lives, you know, for the Trojans. And although the Trojans can cause turnovers, that's the only thing they can do. They give up way too many yards. They, they just don't have the physicality on the defensive side of the football. And that's why they got blown out by Utah. They got blown out. It wasn't close this time. You know, at first I thought the score was like 27-24, you know, because I had, at, at that point, I had, you know, I had fallen asleep, you know. I, I was exhausted, you know, from work and stuff. And I, I wake back up and I realize, oh, wait, that's that doesn't say a 27. That says a 47. Utah put up 47 on USC and it wasn't even close it just just oh my goodness I mean as soon as you know the game you know got tied up you know it, it, it was a wrap it was a wrap after that Utah went super god mode and decided to put an end to USC's playoff hopes now if this were a 12-team playoff, Utah would be in. You know, the 12-team playoff doesn't start until, you know, 2024, and Utah would be in, in this scenario. Do I think Utah, you know, do I think any three-loss team should have a chance at the championship? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no, no. Uh, my thought, let me, let me get my thoughts out the way on the 12-team playoff as it stands. As it stands right now, the way it's set up with the 12 team playoff, you know, they had to get the Rose Bowl to agree. That tells you one problem with the system already. Ditch the bowls high ends, ditch the bowls completely, just ditch them, make them go away. We don't need them. Get them out of here. Second thing is, you know, this top six automatic qualifiers, you know, and the, and the six. At large, is like there's just gonna be some years where we might, you know, sure we get the conference championships, but you see how some of these conference championships, you know, might produce a weird result. You know, in the case of Purdue, it could have produced a weird result, and that's why you know conferences are going divisionless. You know, but that may not solve all the issues of the system that may not solve all the issues of the 12 team playoff you know it's a 12 team playoff but you know there's potentially you know the possibility of some teams seeing each other three times in the season you know, and it's all because you know they had to play the conference championship one of them you know wins the conference championship maybe the other loses one gets by the other gets to play in the first round you know and then they get to meet up again somehow and there you go. It, it's it's not something I would want to see. You know, teams meeting three times in the season—it's already bad enough. You know, when you see teams meet twice in the season, 
sometimes. You can you have to beat him again a second time. And sometimes it doesn't work out. And that's what happened in the case of Kansas State and TCU. Just to get that out of the way. TCU had already beaten Kansas State early in the season. With Will Howard, by the way. That was with Will Howard playing. You know. And he and Deuce Vaughn went off in this game yet again. I mean, just the tandem of these two were on another level. But then Max Duckett went super god mode himself and decided to, you know, just play his heart out. Man's definitely needed some oxygen. He needed he needed some milk after getting, you know, throttled, batted around on this on the field in Arlington at Jerry World today. You know, it was wild because this man ran for 95 yards all the way for a touchdown, you know, on an entire drive by himself. It wasn't like a 95-yard TD run. No, it was a whole drive that he ran for 95 yards. And even, you know, the role players like Kendra Miller just out there playing their hearts out in TCU and Kansas State went toe-to-toe -to -toe yet again, and it came down to OT in which again there was a weird spot you know probably should have been a TCU touchdown but for whatever reason nobody reviewed it TCU decides to do the dumb thing and do a handoff instead of you know trying to push Duggan into the end zone and thus TCU falls to K-State after failing two straight times to get the ball into the end zone in case State would kick the field goal, win the game, and Kansas State is going to the Sugar Bowl, and Utah is going to the Rose Bowl. Very simple, very simple stuff. I think most of the New Year's Six is set anyway, it's set in stone, but you know, it is what it is. John Rice Plumlee pretty much got knocked out of the game for UCF against Tulane he, like they had to go to their third stringer it's Mikey King didn't want to play he didn't want to use his red shirt up you know so they had to go to another quarterback the Knights did and it unfortunately it didn't matter who the quarterback was because Tulane was harassing you know the Knights all day long in the American Championship and the Green Wave, led by Michael Pratt and Ty J. Spears, who, and Spears, I mean, he was just running all over the place. And then you had, you, then you had your good old boy Watts, you know, you know, this, this team, Deuce Watts, I mean, my goodness, man, this man was catching, see, something fierce, you know. Him, him and Wyatt, you know, on the receiving side of things, they were just catching something fierce, I mean, this, this was a game in which Pratt had four touchdowns passing, another on the ground. You know, Ty J. Spears again, nearly 200 yards rushing. I mean, Tulane put on a clinic. Put on a clinic and put up 45. And Tulane will be going to the Cotton Bowl. And a lot of people are saying it's going to be USC that they'll be facing in the Cotton Bowl, which is going to be interesting again some projections you know as far as the Rose Bowl I believe it's gonna be wrote it's gonna be Utah Penn State the Sugar Bowl will be uh, Utah uh, no wait not not the yeah the Sugar Bowl Sugar Bowl top Rose Bowl will be Utah Penn State Sugar Bowl will be Kansas State Alabama and then you have Clemson beating up on North Carolina they finally put in clay cut Cade Klubnik, they finally put him in, and it's finally his turn. You know, the DJ Uyelakele show is over. You know, Davo finally just benched and put him out of his misery. He, uh, again, Klubnik probably should have been starting, you know, a long time ago, but for what for whatever reason, you know, it just it was too little, too late for Clemson. Regardless, you know, after their second loss to South Carolina. But Clemson gets another ACC title to close it out. And I believe, yeah, this is the last year for the divisions in the ACC. So it's going to be interesting to see how the top two teams are going to go going forward, you know, in the ACC. 
um, I don't think it'll you know really change too many things, but it it'll definitely change things again. Clemson, their pride, the prize for the winner of this game was the Orange Bowl, and North Carolina just played absolutely terrible in this game. We're talking Drake May and company didn't do anything. They got smacked around by Clemson, which is saying a lot because you know. Like, North Carolina just sputtered the last three games of the season. Clemson, you know, they got a wishy-washy, but they were able to win an ACC championship and go to the Orange Bowl, probably facing Tennessee. It it should be, you know, Clemson and Alabama in the Orange Bowl, but, you know, it is just semantics at this point. So it is what it is. Um... Despite eight and O'Connell's effort, you know, Purdue didn't do enough on offense to stop Michigan. Donovan Edwards, J.J. McCarthy, again, just too much. And the Wolverines, you know, they're going, they're going to the playoff. We knew that. Again, after USC's loss, we knew that Michigan was going to go. We, they were in regardless, but you know, they took care of business against Purdue and Georgia. You know, they did everything on defense. Brock Bowers, too much. The defense, too much. LSU may have put up 30 points in this game, but that's, you know, a bunch of garbage time points. They put up, this game was over at halftime. 35-7 at halftime. And, I mean, when you have Stetson Bennett just easily throwing four touchdowns in, in like, the first half of the game, it, it's just... It's just too much. It was too much. You know, too much of Georgia on offense. Just too too much of that defense as well. They just they were just smothering LSU. Now LSU has four losses. They're going. LSU's going somewhere. Georgia, we already know, is locked in too. They're locked in to the playoff. So. At the end of the day, again, I don't think anything changed. Nothing changed. There was the entire day, the entire day, we had, you know, we had Nick Saban appearing on different, you know, you know, um, halftime shows and whatnot. We had Nick, we had the Alabama discussion on all the major networks for some reason when Alabama doesn't have the resume to get in. In fact, it should it, it should be, you know, if anyone were having this argument, it would be Tennessee because they beat Alabama. They beat LSU. But they also have two losses, just like Alabama does. You don't hear this talk about Penn State or Washington, who are two teams that have two losses as well. You don't hear this talk about Tennessee, you know, like that. You don't, you don't hear this talk about the other two lost teams. You don't hear us talk about clubs and I don't get it. Just because Alabama has two losses does not mean they deserve special treatment. They're not only not one of the four best, they're not deserving of it either. They don't have the resume this year. You know, if USC took care of business, then that would be our war. That, you know, you know, I don't I don't think Ohio State would have did anything. You know, Ohio State did nothing, you know, to really warrant getting in. But because USC lost, that was the only way, you know, Ohio State was getting in. That's really the only thing, regardless. There there's not enough teams that have one loss this year. There's there's the four that's left, the two undefeateds, Georgia and Michigan, and the two one-loss teams, Ohio State and TCU. That is our playoff. There should That's the end of the discussion. These are the four teams that have zero or one losses. Those are the teams that are left. There was no argument for Alabama. There shouldn't have been an argument for Alabama. There shouldn't have been, no, there, there shouldn't have been nothing about, oh, Alabama, you know, can get into the playoff. These arguments should have died down the moment L- the moment LSU beat Alabama. 
the moment LSU beat Alabama, Alabama was out. It doesn't make any sense that people argued this. They argued for something that um, just, just it just it's just mind-boggling at this point. Doesn't make any sense. Something does make sense though. Deion Sanders going to Colorado. That's real good. Real good for Dion. We'll talk about Dion a little bit more um, in the recap for the FCS because I need to, you know, discuss some things over there. Um, but yeah, I don't get it. Also, we have all our bowl teams. New Mexico State got a waiver to go. Uh, Buffalo won their game, and then Rice is gonna go bowling. So we have our 82 teams that are going to go bowling. But again, um, 12 team playoff, you know, coming in a few years. Uh, again, I, I don't see the purpose in a 12 team playoff. I would go 8 first. That just that just seems more natural. You don't go from 4 to 12. It doesn't make any sense. You go from 4 to 8 to test the waters. Then you go to 12. You know, but whatever. It is what it is. I'm not going to fret about it because I'm just going to have to get used to it like I did with the NFL expanding to 14, like I did with the NBA going with, um, you know, the play-in tournament. But I don't watch the play-in tournament. I do watch, you know, the all six NFL wild card games. I do watch all of them. We, we do watch all of them. We watch, we preview, we recap, we watch all those games so I don't know I don't know I don't know how to feel y'all said it was y'all said yes to it that it's a good thing I wonder how y'all are gonna respond to the poll question that I have up about Alabama should they get in and again my thought process on this is no they don't have any good wins they have two losses they have basically nothing you know best win it gets is my Texas Longhorns who got worked by TCU don't let that score of 17 to 10 fool you they got worked by TCU they got worked you know TCU could have scored way more in that game but it was a defensive slugfest that was you know you know just as just as you know ugly it's you know the Alabama Texas game but you know TCU Texas was you know about on par, if not slightly better. Once again, Alabama could have gotten smoked. They, 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 they. Alabama's just not a good team this year. They have to skate by a lot of games. TCU had to skate by a lot of games too, but they won all their games before the conference championship. They won all their games in the regular season. Alabama didn't. They what? <laughs> No, I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna. Not even gonna say anything. Also, um, the other conference championships, real quick. Um, you know, Toledo won the MAC over Ohio, Fresno State beat Boise State, and then Troy, the men of Troy, beat Coastal Carolina, smoked them. You know, like they were nothing. They smoked them like they were smoked Gouda. So. Yeah, there's that. Um, the Bulls should be set tomorrow. We'll talk about the Bulls tomorrow, but I don't really. Um, some of the Bulls are already set before tonight and everything like that. But at the end of the day, our four teams are set. Um, unless the committee says something stupid, which I don't think they will. We're about less than 12 hours away from the reveal of the final four anyway but I think our four are set and yeah that's all I gotta say I'm gonna get, I'm gonna I'm gonna go record the FCS video now I, I'm done talking about Alabama right now because y'all you guys in the media and on Twitter you guys really grind my gears you really do